before we go to where we're going today, I want us to back up a little bit, lay some groundwork that we established last week, and then use that as a springboard for our work today. And so backing up even a little bit before last week to last month, our theme for this month really kind of is a building of last month's theme, which was let us help you do life. And as I've said now for six weeks in a row, life, two different definitions of life, lowercase life, meaning this human life, this human life that we live with, with all of its interesting uh, experiences that we have. You know, what is that ancient uh, curse, may you live in interesting times, right? Isn't that it, right? But so life can be interesting at times. Uh, so, you know, let us help you do life, lowercase l. Let us help you do life, capital case L, meaning that bigger life, that the, the life that is God. Let us help you. We are here to help you connect more fully with that life. So this month, based on that theme, we've moved this month into engaging, embracing, and empowering life whether it's a capital L or a lowercase l, it fits. Engaging, embracing, and empowering life. So what I mean by that, engaging, what do I mean by engaging? Well, for me, this one is the uh, lowercase l life, engaging fully in this life experience that we're having. Not sitting on the sidelines, not waiting for something to happen, not going on automatic automatic pilot and just plugging along every single day, but being actively engaged in the experience of life that you are having here on earth. Because while we are infinite beings, eternal beings, and this lifetime is just a blip on the radar screen, it's an important blip. And it's the only blip we have right now. So I think we ought to make the best of it. And by that, I mean have the experiences that bring joy, peace, prosperity, love, kindness, not only into our lives, but into the lives of of others. So engage fully in this life. Embrace life. Deeply embrace life. Now that's going to be the capital L. Embrace this idea that you are connected with, you are one with something way bigger than you. Way bigger than you might think. Connect with the power and the presence of God that lives and moves and has its being as you. And recognize, as our founder Ernest Holmes said, as his tagline for his radio show back in uh, L.A. in the 30s, 40s, I'm not exactly sure when, huh? 50s, 50s, thank you, in the 50s. There is a power in this universe for good, and you can, see, John could announce it, and you can use it. That was the, you shouldn't, you, yes, you remember listening to it. There is a power for good in this universe, and you can use it. Embrace that idea. Embrace that power. Embrace life in that way. And then um, empower. Empower your life by recognizing, standing firm, being confident in the idea of who and whose you are. So that is our idea of engaging, embracing, and empowering life. Engaging this human life by being actively involved. Embracing that bigger life, that power that is. And then absolutely empower yourself by knowing who and whose you are. When we do all of that, we move into an extraordinary experience in this life. So last week we started out with a very important statement that I made. And then we confirmed it with some statements that we made. And I want to go back and do that again because it was powerful and important and a good groundwork for then moving forward where we're going to go today. So the statement that I made was that you are and the power that you are is amazing and probably even beyond your comprehension. Who you are and the power that you are is absolutely extraordinary, phenomenal. You remember me saying that? No, look at that. You're going, no, I don't remember that. I don't recall that you said that. I did say it. So did that just not land in you, right? Okay, so if, there, if you don't remember it, is there a block in you to even hearing that? <laughs> so I'm going to say it again. Who you are and the power you are are extraordinary, Who you are and the power you are are extraordinary. Let's just say that, who I am. Who I am and the power I am are extraordinary. 
Okay, so now next week when I ask you again, you'll go, you can, yes, you're, you're going to remember. Do you remember the statements that we made to confirm that? Remember, we stood up and we held our arms out and we made some power statements? Oh, yeah. yes. oh my gosh. <laughs> Now's a good time for that plug for Wednesday. <laughs> yes, yes. So if you forget between one Sunday to the next, you should come to Wednesday night because you will get a reminder of everything that we've talked about. <laughs> Good job, Jeannie. Thank you for that. Yes, yes. And then when I say on Sunday, remember that? You'll have two shots at remembering it. Yes. All right. Well, in case you didn't remember or you weren't here, I'll give you a bye if you weren't here. We said some really powerful statements of who we are and then the power that we are. And we're going to say them again. And we got into our power position, which is arms up. Science has shown us that this is the power position. You can even stand up if you want it. It's even more powerful. We'll say half of them, and then I'll give you a chance to put your arms down in case they're getting tired. But here is the first one. Repeat after me. I am the mighty ocean in a drop of water. And as such, I have the power of the ocean at my fingertips. I am, I am a vehicle of concentrated God stuff. I am a vehicle of concentrated God stuff. And as such, and as such I have the power of God concentrate at my disposal. I have the power of God concentrate at my disposal. I am the formed expression of the infinite unformed. I am the formed expression of the infinite unformed. And as such. I have the power to form the infinite unformed. Okay, breathe that in. Take your hands to your heart. We're not done. We're halfway done. Just breathe it in though. Whoa! The power you are, who you are, and the power you are is extraordinary. <sighs> Second half, arms out again. With conviction, I am a singular manifestation of all that is. And as such, and as such all, that is, is me. all that is, is me. I am a point of light in the eternal sun. And as such, it is my birthright to shine. I'm a perfect creation of the creator of all. <laughs> and as such, and as such I, am I am a creator. And so it is, and so we let it be. Woo! Yeah. You remember all that, right? You remember doing that, yes? Yeah. So that's where we were last week. Then last week I said, how do we align with this? And I gave you an assignment. I gave you a challenge. And if you were here, I want to remind you, you said yes. You said you would take the challenge. Now we get to find out. <laughs> page 302 paragraph 2 you are good p- p- yeah no he was not in first service well he kind of wasn't he was at the end of so in this book page 302 paragraph 2 Ernest Holmes gives us the formula for staying in alignment with the with who we are and the power that we have. And I want to read it again. And Karen used a part of it in her opening prayer. I love how all that just flows together. Synchronicity so beautiful. But this is the whole, this is the passage that I read last week. And then I asked you to live this. I challenged you to live this this week. And then I said, I'm going to ask you today. Actually, last week I said, I'm going to ask you next week. And now here we are. How you did that. So be prepared to be asked. Here it is. All the power of the universe is with you. Lay that foundation out again. Feel it. Know it. And then act as though it were true. Begin to blot out one by one all false beliefs, all ideas that you are limited, poor, or miserable. Refuse to think of failure or doubt your own power. See only what you wish to experience and look at nothing else. Cannot the great principle of life create for us all that we need? The universe is inexhaustible. It is limitless. It knows no bounds and has no confines. Now my favorite part. We are not depending on a reed shaken by the wind, but on the principle of life itself for all that we have or ever shall need. 
It is not some power. It is not a great power. It is all power. Oh, gives me goosebumps. All we have to do is believe, never wavering no matter what. As we do this, we shall find that things are steadily coming our way and that they are coming without that awful effort which destroys the peace of mind of the majority of the human race. When we know that there can be no failure in the mind of God, we know that there can be no failure in the mind of God and this is the my, and this mind is the power on which we are depending. Let me say that last sentence again because I kind of fumbled over it. We know that there can be no failure in God's mind and this mind is the power on which we are depending. And I will add this mind is our mind. So I asked you, gave you the challenge to do this. Feel this, know this, act as if this, this were true. Blot out one by one all false ideas that you are limited, poor, or miserable. Refuse to think of failure or to doubt your own power. See only what you wish to experience, not necessarily what's just sitting in front of you. Look at nothing other than what you wish to experience. So let me give you a quick example for me, and then I want to hear from one or two people of how you did this. So uh, mine is this. <clears throat> Next week, actually tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., I'm catching a flight to go to Kansas City. And I'm actually going to a conference. I'm going to the Unity Conference. Why is, am I, a religious science minister, going to a Unity Conference? Well, thank you for asking. I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm very excited to go uh, uh, for the reason I'm going, but also because it is at Unity, or it is at Kansas City, and I have always wanted to visit Unity Village. Uh, I hear it's a spectacular place, and I get to I get to have that experience. Now, Unity Village is the birthplace of our sister denomination, Unity, and that's where their school of ministry is, and it's an entire village, and I'm eager to go. But I am going to this conference, not just as a conference attendee. I will have a chance to attend some sessions, but I'm going as a vendor, what am I vending? Well, um, I've never done anything like this before, but I decided to branch out, and I'll explain a little bit more about it as I talk more today and because it fits into our topic. But I'm going as a vendor, I'm going to have a table for my ministerial support work that I offer to other New Thought ministers. I have lots of products and services that I offer other ministers in our umbrella denomination under New Thought, and I decided that this would be a way to get me in front of a lot of New Thought ministers. So I am going as a vendor. Whoa, stretching way out of my comfort zone to do this, but yay. Now, here's my point about this for this exercise. Uh, I had we ordered, Lonnie and I ordered through a company in California, 200 CDs of uh, uh, talks that, uh, so I could give them away as giveaways. People come to my table, they'll get a a sermon and uh, lesson plans in written form, but it's on a CD. And so we ordered those and gave, had them, told them to ship them directly to Unity Village, and I needed them there by Monday morning. Well, there was a little snafu. Things didn't get started like they were supposed to. Fortunately, Lonnie had a hit last week to call them to check on it. Oh, we haven't even started this yet. We didn't know you needed it by any certain date. Ah, was my first reaction. We'll have it there by Tuesday before end of day. Like, no, no, Tuesday before end of day is not acceptable. This conference starts Tuesday morning. I have to have it. So at first, if any of you are like me, I got a little bit into my stuff. (laughs) Do we know what that is? Do we know what our stuff is? This is unacceptable. No, this can't be like, no, there's, I told them, we told them what's wrong with them. We need a discount. They need to give us for free. Oh, wait a minute. I gave the congregation a challenge on Sunday and I suppose... (laughs) I suppose I ought to live that challenge too. That would be a good thing. What, how would I live this challenge right now? I would see only what I wish to experience. What do I wish to experience? That that box is there even before I get there. That when I arrive, it is waiting for me. So I can unpack it on Monday and we can set up and we can tie pretty ribbons around 200 CDs and it's going to be perfect. That's what I wish to see. That's what I desire to experience. So this week, every time my mind wanted to go to, I wonder if it's going to be there. I'm so mad at them that they screwed this up. Oh, whoop, back. What do I wish to see? I know and accept that they're there. I put aside any limitation, any lack, any, I'm blessing UPS, I'm blessing the distribution company, I'm blessing everybody involved, and I see it there waiting for me. I'll report on that next week. Uh, I will report on that. That's how I, this week, 
lived this, it, one example anyway. So I want to hear another example. Lonnie has a microphone so we can all hear, and especially those online can hear. Who lived it this week with a brief example? Okay, yes, tell, hold on, let this, Dee let this come to you. Come on, here you go. Well, I was at the airport yesterday in Seattle, and my daughter dropped me off actually where the arrivals were because the departure line was so long getting into the airport. And we were about an hour and a half ahead of when my flight was going to be. And so um, basically I went in and went up the elevator and then went, I was going Southwest and I looked at that one. Wow. There was like a thousand people in line the one way. So I decided to go outside and I met some, you know, me, I met lots of wonderful people (laughs) all around me. And there was one lady that was on the same flight as me. And we, the line was very, very long. And it was about 45 minutes before our flight. And we were still in line to check our bags. That's how long we were in line. So anyway, we both started going. So I just said, excuse me, our flight is, and we made our way all the way to the front of the line and went through. And then we had to go through a really long line to go through security. And it was more security than normal because there had been a shooting the day before. And so I just, excuse me. And she followed me. She didn't say a word and she followed me and we went all, and I, got to the front and went through. And then we ran as fast as we could and we got there just when it was going to... So what was going on inside of you? What was going on inside of you? I was freaking out. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Were you turning to truth? Were you... Yeah, but you know what? I asked for divine guidance. Okay, thank you. And I spoke from my heart. Yep. And um, I expressed lots of love. Nice. And it worked. Nice. Okay, very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I Did I see... Thank you. Yeah, give her a hand. Did I see... Phil, did you stand up before? Did you... Phil, did you have something? No. Okay, I thought you did. Okay, just wanted to check. Um, All right, Pam, Sam. Um, so I'm taking the gifts of imperfection class on Thursday night. And when I was leaving the parking lot, I usually like going out that way, the way the arrows go, but I decided to try something different because I've been trying to do that. Well, I didn't see this car and I got into a fender bender with it and I was pretty shaken up and I'm thinking, I, my mind is going, I can't afford this. Oh, my God, I hit another car. And I had a shame attack, and I was not feeling very good about myself. Um, and I'm not saying I did it immediately, but I did choose differently. Um, not that I remember this exact lesson. <laughs> I, I mean, I tried to do that anyway. Thank you for your honesty. But, but I, I, I turned to God, and then the support, oh, my gosh, the staff members were great. We did a prayer. And I didn't dwell into the shame. Um, I called Lonnie, my um, life coach. And by the next morning, it had changed. Mm. It had changed. Now, I'm so relieved because her car is taken care of. Now, my insurance has a $500 deductible. And I could be going to the, oh, my God, oh, my God. And you know what? No matter what happens, it's going to be okay. And I'm choosing to visualize going, I go tomorrow, and everything's going to be fine. And um, it's going to be better than I could have expected. So that was a conscious shift. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Time for one more. Let's get Melanie right there. Uh, Melanie? No. Marianne. Marianne. I knew I was close. Marianne. Okay. So the last year I've been working on my relationship with money. And in February, it was at rock bottom. I was scared. (laughs) So from that experience, I've been learning to control my thoughts and my emotions and know that it's going to be okay. And so um, this month, you know, my husband got paid at the beginning of the month. And then I was sitting in church last Sunday and I just checked the bank account and it was like (laughs) almost gone. (laughs) And I sent him a text and normally the person I was before would have gone, oh my gosh, where'd all the money go? We need to figure this out. But instead I said, where'd all the money go? Laughing emoji, LOL. So I chose to do that, and it actually did change my emotion about it. I was just like, oh, that's so funny. It's all gone. (laughs) (laughs) And it's only like the fifth, you know. So then um, the rest of the week, we're living our lives, and the money's still going away. And I started to feel that impulse to be my old self. And I was like, nope, that's not going to happen. We're going to be fine. There's going to be some money. It's just going to show up. And then my husband got paid twice again. 
And then um, my husband's aunts, they had a package sitting in their trunk in Minnesota for the last six months since Christmas. <laughs> and they kept on forgetting to send it. And they finally decided to send it. And there was a check in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And there it and that's how it works. As beautiful uh, Unity Minister Johnny, Reverend Johnny Coleman used to say, it works if you work it. And those are three beautiful examples of working it. So today, we're going to move into more of how we work it. From, coming from the place of recognizing who we are and whose we are and the power that we are is phenomenal. Coming from that place. Many of us, uh, and I don't know if you'll fall into this category or not, but when we first started into this teaching, at least I, I was this, you know, so excited. You, you, can you remember back when you first learned about the power that you are and who you are and whose you are and, and, and you learned that you're a creative being, you're not just a victim of circumstances and you found out that through your prayer and your thoughts and your beliefs, you can change conditions. I mean, my gosh, this was, do you remember when you found that out? That was so exciting. But maybe... Maybe you might have been into that place where you just thought all you have to do is just kind of sit in the corner and ohm and all will come to you, right? That's all I have to do is just sit in the corner and ohm and all will come to me. And then if that happened, you might have found a little bit of a disappointment because it wasn't, that's not quite it. There's something else that must be done. Now we can absolutely 100% rely, as Ernest Holmes said in our quote of, for, of, for last week and this week, princi- we can rely on the principle of life itself for all we have or shall ever need, remembering that it is not some power, it is not a great power, it is all power. Yes, we can rely on that. Yes. And then Ernest Holmes said, feel it know it, and then act, there's our word, as though it were true. Act as though it were true. Mike Dooley, in his great book, Leveraging the Universe, Seven Steps to Engaging Life's Magic, he said, we must avail ourselves of the universe's magic. We must go out into the world so that our manifestation can reach us, so that little serendipities, coincidences, and happy accidents can fall onto our path that wouldn't have otherwise if we had sat at home waiting for a breakthrough. Kind of like the ancient joke, which I won't tell unless you force me to, like first service did. Um, Tell it, it, but you've all heard it already, and it's really old. You know about the guy who prays to God, let me win the lottery, God, please let me win the lottery every week, God, please let me win the lottery, I need this money, please, God, let me win the lottery, I want to, I'm doing, and finally he gets, really, because he never, he doesn't win, and he doesn't win, and he doesn't win, and finally he goes, all right, God, has this conversation. Ever had a conversation with God? Yep. I don't get it. You know, you say in the Bible, ask and it shall be given unto you. I've asked, I have asked, I have asked, I have asked, and yet nothing has happened. And what is up with this? And with that, the booming voice comes down and said, help me out at least buy a ticket. (laughs) You know that joke, right? I mean, oh my gosh, it's ancient. It's ancient. What is ours to do? Sometimes that's a piece missing from our spiritual work. What is ours to do? Divinely guided, inspired action is an important, critically important step in engaging life, this life, and embracing the bigger life. Inspired, divinely guided action. And there's more. (laughs) It's not just inspired, divinely guided action. It's differentiating between what is ours to do and what we give over to the bigger picture life. Or as uh, Mae McCarthy, who wrote a great book and was a a guest speaker here in February, turn it over, what is ours to turn over to our CSO, Chief? Oh, great. You remember what she said. In February, but you don't remember what I said last week. Now, I am not going to take that personally. Any, I am not going to take that personally. 
I'm actually very glad that you knew it was chief spiritual, <laughs> chief spiritual officer. Yes. So I want to give you a very specific plan that I know you're going to remember on how to uh, identify what is ours and what is sources, what is spirit, what is God's, what is life to do, and then getting about the business of doing what is ours to do and letting spirit, trusting spirit to do what is spirit's job. And so here is a tool. One of the things I love about uh, science of mind and about us, particularly in the way we deliver science of mind, is that we give you lots of tools, lots of practical tools. So here is a practical tool. Write this down if you have a piece of paper. And by the way, in case you don't know this, we have paper available. So we had somebody suggest once, why don't you have paper available for us to write on so we don't write on the envelopes? Good idea. Uh, instead of putting the paper in the pews, just because there's so much stuff in the pews already, that table that's right out, uh, right by the north door, did you ever notice this? There's a thing that has paper in it. Did, you ever, did anyone ever notice that? Like three, four, five people, five people noticed that that was there. Rock on. The rest of you, open your eyes. <laughs> There's a table right there with paper. So next week, if you want a piece of paper, grab some before you come in. But today, in your mind's eye, this isn't complicated. You can remember, you're going to draw a triangle, big triangle, as big as you can make it on this piece of paper. And at the top, above the triangle, you're going to write whatever it is that is up for you in terms of what is it the next step, the next iteration of your evolution? What's the next experience you desire to have? What's your next dream that you're working on? What's your next thing? And you may have 50 next things. That's great. 50 triangles then, 50 different triangles. So if I were going to give the example of my trip to Unity uh, conference this week, and if, if it, and I haven't done this yet for, for this, and I want to now that I have this new idea that came out of Mike Dooley's book, by the way, um, I would write at the top, support new thought ministers in profound ways and bring in for me an extra, I don't know, what? I haven't decided yet. I should decide. A hundred. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking 25. I like, a, and then bring into me an extra $100,000 of income. I, I like the way you think. Very good. All right. That'll be 20 grand. That'll be 20 grand. I, will t- I, will, I, will t- I will share a portion of my tithe with you for that creative idea. <laughs> Righto. So support New Thought Ministers in amazing ways and bring in additional... Okay, I have to breathe at that one. So that's, see, then we can test our goals. If I have to really breathe, that may be more of a stretch than I'm ready to go with. But nonetheless, I have to pray about that. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Huh? Think big. I know. I know. Thank you. All right. So that would be at the top of mine. What's that? Why ask for a drop? When the, yeah. Would you like, would you like to come up here and preach this sermon now? You too. You too, you. Come on. Come on. Yeah, right? <laughs> I do. I know. Our new people are thinking, this is the oddest church service I've ever been to. I didn't know it was. It is. It's always. You never know what will happen here. Okay. So you're going to have at the top, whatever it is, your stretch goal, right? You're going to have it. You're drawing your triangle. You're going to put a line right down the middle of your triangle. On one side, you're going to put at the bottom me or your name or, you know, however you want to identify yourself. On the other side, you're going to write spirit, source, chief spiritual officer, life, God, whatever term you want to use for God. Henry, doesn't matter. So at the bottom, one side, your name. The other side, God. On your side, you're going to write down everything you can think of physically, logically, emotionally, spiritually that you could do to bring that goal into your experience, that dream. Everything you could do, you're going to, so you need a big, because I want you to have 20 things inside of that. 20. Oh, I know. I got that reaction in first service too. Ooh, 20. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's going to help you deepen into beyond what's just in your head if you, if you go for 20. Just, just the ob- beyond the obvious. So 20 things in that, on that side, Right? That's yours to do. Those are yours to do. Those are your divinely inspired actions. Very, very important. Not the whole picture, but very, very important. And without this side, the chances of having your dream manifest itself lessen considerably. (laughs) Anybody have or anybody know someone who's had a dream for a very long time? 
but that's where it is. It's a dream. It hasn't yet come into fruition. It hasn't manifested yet, and it's been there for, oh, 10 years, 20 years. Yeah? We have, okay, so we have that. Might be because we've not done this process. We've not started taking our divinely inspired action. So 20 ideas. The other side, however, this is the, this is the critical part because they work together. They work in unison. Just your actions alone, not going to get you there. They're actually never going to get you there. They're never going to be enough. Now, please hear me. I did not say you will never be enough. I said those actions alone will never be enough. But when you couple them with what you put on the other side, oh, then you cannot hold them back from happening. What you're going to put on the other side are all the ideas that you could think of, ways that you can think of in your, heart, in your deepest place that spirit, God, life can show up for you. All the serendipitous happenings, the coincidences, the out of the blue. <laughs> I mean, who, who could guess that an aunt and uncle, did you say it was your aunt and uncle? Your, your husband's aunt, who for six months have had a Christmas present in the back of the trunk of the car, which included a check. Who would orchestrate that, right? Who could orchestrate that other than source and that it would get sent now? just when it's a time when it is very helpful for it to be received, right? Because if it had gotten here at Christmas, it would have been gone by now, (laughs) right? So all the ways that source can show up for you in serendipitous ways. So I'm going to give you just one example. And if you happen to have Mike Dooley's book, there are lots of of examples in that book for different categories. But let's just say that you are wanting to change or improve your career or your work livelihood. Anybody in that position right now? Got a couple, a couple, three folks. Okay. So how about, these are just, these are just ideas, may not be for you, but these are ideas that could be on your side of the triangle. Start or continue refining your education. Obtain a license or a certificate that you might need. Create a website. Create a business plan. That would be first, by the way, before the website. (laughs) Create a business plan. Get your business cards printed. Actively seek or strategize to find new partners, investors, customers, and so on. Ask a mentor for help. Do your daily visualization. Remember, this is the things tangible, physical in the world, as well as your spiritual work. Um, Read books on on other people who have succeeded in the area that you want to go in. Help others who are looking to be successful in this area. Just a few ideas if you're looking to shift, expand your work or livelihood. Now, if you're someone sitting out there going, I really want to do that, but I don't even know... I don't even know what I want to do. I'm not even sure about that. Well, then we go to what Mike Dooley calls his phrase, do the best with what you can with where you are. And if if that's the case, you would want to write down on your list being the absolute best person you could be doing what you're doing now. And how can you do that even better? With more love, more expansive, giving of yourself even more, sharing your gifts in even a greater way right where you are. Okay, does that all make sense? That's just kind of to prime the pump a little bit in your thinking. Then what could go over on the other side? What could go on the universe's side? Again, think of miracles, serendipitous events, happy accidents that could occur. Things, and then internal things as well, such as, um, well, here's an external. Help you meet, unexpe- help you unexpectedly meet people who have been looking for what you have to offer. Right? Bring people into your experience. Give you a bright idea that will not only change your life, but change the world. Provide inspiration and motivation when you run out of it. Arrange circumstances to ease your journey. These are all things you can't do, but source absolutely can. Hone your skills and improve your talents. Instill confidence in you. Remove distractions that are not serving you. Help you deal with an obstacle or a sticky, tricky situation that you've got in front of you. Those are all things that you can give over to source and trust. This is the key. Trust that source is handling that side. You're going to do your side. You're trusting that source is doing its side. When, th- when you're doing your side, just that alone isn't enough. But when you trust that source is doing its side, which it always is, but cannot do for you unless you're doing your part, 
right? Those happy circumstances and coincidences can't occur unless you're out there. So source cannot serve you unless you are actively engaged. So that's why your participation in this is so critically important. I love the uh, concept is that every one of those things that you have on your list that you would do, they're like you're tossing balls out into the universe. Now, you're not having to make the home run. So you're going to be unattached to any of those balls that you're tossing out to be the one that brings about that dream. Not your job to know which one it is. It's your job to lob them out. It's the universe's job to take one or more of them and hit a home run with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's easy, though, and this I can find this for myself, that if you come up with a, an idea and you have it on your side of the fence, on your side of the triangle, and you act that on that idea, you expect that idea to be the one. So I have, a, I have, a little, have had a little bit of that going on with me about this Unity Conference. Okay, I have never stepped out in a way this big before to market this. Um, I've done minimal marketing over the last six, seven years that I've had this service available. So this is a big step. It's a big investment in time and money for me to go do this. And so part of me, there's a little part of me that says, this is it. This is going to be the one that opens up and I now serve hundreds of people. My work is to let that expectation go and do what I'm called to do, which is to go, to show up, be fully present and be the best I can be. And and it's God's job to do all the rest. So I and myself am in practice right now of letting go of any attachment that that is the way. So your job (laughs) is to let go of any attachment that any one of them is the way, knowing That as you fully show up, the divine runs in to do all of those things and more that you've put on God's side. I love this statement from, strangely enough, Abraham Lincoln, who said, without divine assistance, all those things on that side that you've identified and beyond, without divine assistance, without divine assistance, I cannot succeed. With it, I cannot fail. Without divine assistance, I cannot succeed. But with it, I cannot fail. So, your mission this week, should you choose to accept it, and if you get it, forget it, please come back on Wednesday and be reminded, that uh, to make your triangle. If for at least one area of your life, make your triangle. And then begin working on your side and trusting God's side. This is how we fully fully engage life, lowercase l, and embrace life, uppercase l. So I want to leave you with a note from the universe, Mike Dooley's notes from the universe. He said, it's true that the early bird gets the worm, but so does the late bird and even the bird in between, because by design, there are always more than enough worms. In fact, The only bird that doesn't get a worm is the bird that doesn't go out to get one. Oh, how joyous to be alive, the universe. So my friends, there are enough worms. (laughs) There's an infinite number of worms. (laughs) So do your part. Do your part and have a joyous time in the meantime. And let us pray right now. Hmm. So recognizing the beautiful opportunity that we have to fully engage in life. Recognizing the gift that it is to show up. To show up fully. To allow ourselves, to open ourselves up to being inspired. And then to moving our feet in the direction of those inspirations. How beautiful it is, how joyous, how fun it is to do that and to know then that there is an infinite power behind us, in front of us, around us, supporting this and making the way easy, bringing into our experiences that which we need and creating whatever our highest dream, highest goal is, creating it in ways that we might never, ever have thought of. 
how beautiful it is to walk in this marriage of inspired action and complete faith and trust. And how beautiful it is to have those dreams, those goals, those heart's desires brought into our life. And knowing, as I often say, and I say again now, that there is no private good. So we know that as we experience our greater good, our greater joy, the manifestation of our dreams, that we are, in fact, the catalyst for greater good in the world. I accept this absolutely deeply and firmly that this is true. That as each and every one of us walks this process, manifests our dreams, we are a catalyst for others to do the same. As we shine our lights brighter and shine light in a place that is not so bright, we bless those in that corner and then their lights shine brighter and bless others and it goes on and on. And in this, we have a world that works for everyone. So I affirm this for us all here today. That we are divinely inspired with, to take that right and perfect action. That the universe is absolutely always there for us and that we have a sense that that is so. And I rejoice and celebrate in what happens as we do this. As we go forth in our lives with that level of trust in who and whose we are. And in the power and in the beauty and in the blessings that unfold because of it. So I say thank you, thank you God. Thank you life, thank you source, thank you spirit that this is so. And I release these words now into the perfect law, calling it good, calling it done. And we affirm and confirm that it is done by saying together, and so it is. Amen.